Welcome back, everyone, to the number 2019 2v2 1v1 tournament. Not 2v2, 1v1. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have round two. It's going to be starting out with Saniac and Gaunson. And Saniac, they get the ban. They're banning Adansonia. The map choices this round are... Let's see. We're not listed in chat, so I have to double check. They are Adansonia, Obsidian, and Shimmershore. And we are going to be playing on Obsidian. Which... I'm actually a little surprised by because I thought Adansonia, I, mean, I guess Adansonia was banned. So considering the options, yeah, no one's going to pick Shimmershore. So we're going to be on Obsidian because Shimmershore is a tiny sea map and people don't tend to play a lot of sea. And for a sea map, Shimmershore is a very famine map. So you don't even see a lot of play there because ships are not, ships are kind of expensive. Yeah, ships are pretty expensive. So I wouldn't expect... I mean, we might see... There might be other players who played on Shimmer Shore. I just don't expect that to be a common choice. In fact, I don't think there's anyone currently playing who is a known sea specialist. I'm trying to remember, but I don't think... Yeah, I can't think of anyone, anyone who's currently in the tournament. If someone else does, let me know. I just... Yeah, it's not... No, it's coming to my head. Ugh. Sorry about this. OBS has been doing a really annoying bug where it's not transitioning scenes. There we go. Whatever, screw it. <laughs> Force it to change. Uh, Gonson, bottom left, Saniac, top right, and looks like Gonson's going for Spider Factory. Saniac, unless they're going very forward. See how that plays out. What is Saniac doing? Are they going for a proxy Cloaky Factory or a proxy Factory? It looks like it. Now it's a very forward Shield Bot Factory. Not, I wouldn't say proxy. This map doesn't really make that like that's not proxy. That is. That's kind of, no, it's kind of proxy, actually. That is very forward. Gaunson in a bit of a more typical position with the Spider Factory, and this map being what it is, I I can kind of see spiders, but these hills are bot pathable. Not like the bandits will have a huge tr huge amount of trouble getting over them. Like Red just means slow. It doesn't mean impassable. Purple means impassable. The so spiders don't have an especially major advantage on this map. I mean, it's nice. They don't get any real slowdown, which bots would, or which non-spider bots would. However, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm thinking we're going to be seeing a bit of an opening that'll work pretty well for Saniac, and then after that, and Gaunson being able to just put fleas everywhere, see what's going on, have a much easier time with basically everything, because... Saniac, they can use radar, but they can't really get a lot of scouting. But the fleas are everywhere. And the thing about radar on this map is because there are so many hills, radar doesn't do all that much. Like if I look at at the view here, like you can see the radar is completely cut off by the mountain ranges. Because that's how radar works. So Gaunson is going to have a bit of an easier time with scouting than Saniac, which... That's going to make it a lot easier for Gaunson to actually do stuff. On top of the fact that... It is still a little bit easier for units to get around, so Gaunson will have a bit of an easier time getting all of these metal extractors. Whereas Saniac is going to be a little bit more hard-pressed to do so. Not to mention, that's a lot of fleas. I mean, okay, it takes a lot of fleas to kill a bandit, but still, that is that is a significant investment in fleas coming in there, and it's not going to waste. Curious, though, what's, does Gaunson know where Saniac's commanders? is? I don't think they do. No, they don't. They don't. I mean, they might, because the flea might have been able to see it. So, the way Saniac is set up, they do have a lot of stuff in the back. Like, a lot of metal extractors in the back, but 12 that are basically... Not 12. 12 metal worth of metal extractors. Basically have 7 metal extractors. Wait, it's not 12. It's plus 2 and 3. That's, like, 16-ish. So, they have a lot of metal to work with. But then Gaunson have expanded forward. They've gotten that as well. It's not a huge difference economically, but Gaunson's expanded over to the side a lot faster. They're clearly a lot more confident in what they can take. 
Saniac expanded to the corners a bit faster, but Gauntlet, I think, knows exactly where, Gaunt, where Saniac's commander is. And it looks like Gauntlet pretty much focused entirely on getting their economy set up. Not really too worried about harassing that. Just, just want to make sure they know exactly what's going on. Seeing everything set up. Unfortunately, they don't have a lot of power infrastructure, and they are very low in metal. As, or they're not low in metal. They're accessing metal as a result. Fortunately, then the Redback finally coming up, which will make this a bit of an easier fight for, for Gaunson. Getting rid of all those bandits. Yeah, that's that's what more like it. That's more what Gaunson wants. So I would say Gaunson would be at an advantage if it weren't for the fact that they are low on energy and don't have any caretakers in the main base. Now, the Weaver might end up being used for the main base, and I kind of hope it is. But I seriously doubt it. I think Gaunson's going to be using it to build more energy infrastructure. Oh no, they are going for it, actually. Good, I like that. Although I would say, like, they do need more energy infrastructure. That that wasn't... I wasn't saying that in any kind of mockery. They, Gaunson... Gaunson needs energy. That is absolutely a resource they are lacking right now. Saniac's quite healthy on that, and they do have a caretaker built up. A couple of caretakers, actually. So, Saniac should be pulling ahead pretty quick when it comes to their economy. Not to mention, the bandits coming in harassing over the eastern side of the map. That will help secure the southeast expansion, making it a lot easier for Saniac to maintain this economic dominance they've found themselves in. Especially as the Weaver is going to be going down. There's nothing that can stop this. Not to mention, over here in the southwest, the bandits could come along and nothing is going to stop them. Like, absolutely nothing is going to stop anything here from being built. Or from being killed, rather. We are seeing a slight attempt here. The Venom Redback, they are coming down. They're trying their best, but it's its going to be a little late. The Weaver will probably die. Definitely several of the Wind Generators will go down. And these Wind Generators are finally making something for Gaunson. Like they're finally getting them some energy somewhere. But no, actually being saved. The Bandits decided to go a little bit further in. And as a result, not managing... Well, actually, still managing to get quite a bit killed. But they're getting all the weak wind generators. All the good wind generators did not go down first, so that's that's actually pretty good for Gaunson. They've they bounced back pretty quickly. The Weaver's still up here. The wind generators that are actually generating power are still up. So Gaunson not doing too bad. At the same time, though, their frontal assault from Saniac is not going to be well defended. The fleas are going to be torn apart by outlaws. The rogues are... I mean, they would be torn apart by fleas if it weren't for the outlaws. And the fusion reactor coming from Gaunson. A bit of a desperation play on their part. I do not agree with that. And I kind of wish they would build some recluses. Because, I mean, people, Astro is pointing out in the spectator chat, recluses would be a good idea. And recluses would be a good idea. I just don't really see them. And I'm a little bit surprised. And they're not even in the queue. I mean, a lot of fleas in queue. If it weren't for the outlaw, I'd definitely agree with the use of fleas. But there are outlaws. And that is completely nullifying any fleas. It's like, ah, I don't understand the fusion reactor. I don't understand what's going on. Why are you building this? Like, the wind generators were actually pretty good. Just build a few more of those this high ground. They're like one energy each. But it looks like Saniac will, does have the upper hand. And that is, that's going to be it. Saniac in the base. Basically destroying any hope that Gaunson might have had to get this game back. Venom, the last stand, the last line of defense, goes down without a fight. Now then, the factory's going down. The, the Weaver's trying their best, but that is going to be it. Gaunson throws in the towel without even having a GG. And Saniac takes that game. That was a very quick game. Quick enough that I'm actually going to go check out another game. Because at this point, we probably don't have a lot of games that have gone too far into, well, winning. But who else do we have here? We have... Hyrule Nizrite. Actually, that's the other one I wanted to do. And we have Anansonia now. So let's go check that out, because... I, because that was actually one I wanted to check. Like, I was debating between the two of them. Let's do both! Why not? I am a little bit surprised that we didn't see those high mountain wind generators get torn apart by Saniac. That was that was surprising. I honestly think that would have been the better option. I mean, Saniac won anyway. It's just that was the thing that was giving power. That was the only hope that was there. Anyway, back to the game. So Adansonia, a map, a lot of water, 
And we have Hovercraft, and we have Cloaky. It's like some exchanges happening early on. Fortunately, did not get a huge amount of that. But ultimately, is Ren Hyrule just going into a relatively healthy amount of... Well... Healthy, healthy amount of economy. Hyrule a little bit behind, though. Is a ride expanding very quickly to the center of the map. Looks like Harassment did come in. Hyrule actually with an active Sparrow? That's not dead? Oh, that is dead. Never mind. That is that is a wreck. Anyway, Hyrule is clearly very skittish about expanding. Kind of wish for their sake that they weren't, but they clearly are. So that's that's how things go sometimes. Saniac can, or Izzeride on the other hand, not Saniac, what am I saying? Izzeride on the other hand is proving to have a bit of a harder time. I mean, sorry, not harder time, easier time. Give me a sec to reset my brain. I'm clearly in the last game. Okay. Teal is winning. Red is not. Or Teal is ahead. Red is not. Okay. We're in. So. High rule with the rating. The rating is actually not going to be very effective. The mace already coming in here. Unlike the last game, it looks like this game, we have forward radar. We have a lot of forward radar. It's right knows exactly what's going on. So they know the glaives are coming. They have the mace prepped. They have the lotus up in time. And that is going to be a lot of dead units for Hyrule. That if they don't retreat now... Are they retreating now? Are they even paying attention to this? I don't think they are. No, they're back at their base. Finally paying attention to that a little bit. No, not too late, actually. Nicely done, Hyrule. Losing only a couple of glaives. Getting rid of a metal extractor. Getting rid of the Lotus as well. Not avoiding the mace well enough, though. That... Well, I take that back. It was a good attempt. Same time, Izzerai coming in here with the... With the Sparrow. Just seeing what's going on. Glad to see we're seeing Sparrows used. I feel like players often were sleeping on Sparrows. So finally we're seeing some Sparrows. I like it. But Izzerite seems to be doing that primarily just to get a lot of intel what's going... Or not intel, like to see... I could, to Just basically figure out where should I attack? Because Izzerite... They're in a really good spot right now. I mean, they have a couple of these... couple of these... There are Locusts. And... Not really sure what else, honestly. The Locusts are apparently their entire army right now. Oh, and three maces. My bad. Same time, Phantom in here for Zerite. Trying desperately to get... I mean, seriously, I don't know. Why are you trying to get rid of this power? You're just revealing the fact that you have a Phantom and more or less where it is. But, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> you do you, I guess. just find that kind of amusing. Just how desperate that Phantom is to get that Sparrow. Like, it has a fast projectile, but it's not instant. But yeah, is a ride with the entire south side of the map, basically to their name. Mace is coming over here. That's, yeah, a matter of time before the mace... Oops. matter of time before the mace is just get in there and deal all the damage necessary. This area has one Stardust. That one Stardust is not going to block out the maces. The maces should have no problem taking that out, so... Not a whole lot of defense is going to come in here. What is this? Oh, oof. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, little Quill. You're... You're kind of in a bad spot. Yeah, terraforming does that sometimes. You gotta be careful. Oh, Hyrule, what are you doing with your commander? Moving them forward. I mean, actually, okay, never mind. Stardust is doing a fine job. Going up the hill. Works finding his maces. I underestimated that. Good thinking, Hyrule. Okay. So, Hyrule, pretty well set up for that. But... Is arrived. They are still massively head economically. Wow, that is a lot of lotuses. That is a lot of lotuses. Holy crap. That oops. That is a ridiculous amount of lotuses. And there they go with the maces. This is this is gonna be kind of brutal. I mean Stardust is actually a really good choice against lotuses if you had fewer lotuses. Or locusts rather. But locusts. Yeah, like their namesake, come in large numbers. And when they do, they just destroy everything. They eat it all up. Like a field of wheat, these solar collectors are have been devoured, and Izzeride takes the game pretty convincingly. I mean, gotta be honest, that was... That was a lot of firepower coming in there. I mean, Izzeride just never really had a disadvantage when it came to economy. Not to mention Hyrule accessing a little bit. Not much excess, though. Really, Hyrule just didn't have the income. They never expanded. It was like, they, they didn't expand particularly to... Where are you? 
where is he? Here. And he's right actually put in a little message on the map saying, what the hell? <laughs> because this is, this is a pretty easy expansion to take. It's not a risky expansion for the North player, or in the equivalent case here for the South. It's a little surprising that wasn't taken. Actually, a little surprising this was taken first. That's harder to defend because of everything coming in here, especially against Hovercraft. This becomes flat ground for Hovercraft. And this is harder to defend if it gets assaulted because there's no way of really getting units from one side or the other unless you make a terraform bridge, which no one ever does. So yeah, that was a little bit surprising there. And at this point, it looks like we're basically... Are we done round? I think we're done this round. Not totally sure. Oh, no, we still have other matches going on. All right, well, I don't want to do all of them, but I guess we might be doing all of, or some of them. All right, well, more than Sony, I suppose. Let's see. I'll see Dyson King's dead. Also in Adansonia, by the way. This is Death and Kingstad in Adansonia. We've had a lot of Adansonia. This is going to be a little bit tricky in the description of the video. A lot of different matches going on in this one because I keep picking the shortest matches in order. I tried to pick the longest match, but then I also wanted to pick matches with players I hadn't seen yet. Because now I've seen all the players by Catastrophe, so I guess next round we're just casting whatever game Catastrophe's in. Okay, back to the... Back to Back to the game, and again, and Ansonia, and again. Okay, we have, looks like, gunships against Hovercraft? No, am Amphots against Hovercraft, what am I saying? I cannot recognize the icons, apparently. Ah! And, oh, wow. Okay, that is quite the assault coming in there from Kingstead. Already built up a lot. A lot of boys! Lots and lots and lots of boys. And up against... Yeah, this is what I expected was... Hovercraft and Ampbots. That's generally what you find on this map. It's a little surprising last game. We didn't have that. This game we do, and this game we have a lot of us all coming from Dyth. Kingstead managed to maintain their economy in the process, but actually managing to possibly go for a base trade here. Well, the Grizzly is being torn apart by the Leco. It's not enough, and Dyth throws in the towel. I just came in as soon as it died. Okay, well, that's cool. So, Kingstead just taking the map. Both players taking the map very quickly, and then Dyth losing to a what looked like a bit of a base trade attempt that really went more in Kingstad's favor for timing. Yeah, Death have been a little bit faster on that. Actually might have been able to pull that off. Oh well. That is that. So the next <laughs> next round will be starting very soon. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in whenever it's up, which probably in a couple minutes. So yeah, we'll be back in a sec.